at the end of Casablanca. No, he doesn't die. His motive's still pure. pure <laughs> Jimmy Cagney, the end of Angels with Dirty Faces. No. Come on. Pat O'Brien asked him to scream. He says, don't do this to me, fella. Don't take away the only thing I have left. He screams because he's frightened. No, 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 no. You know, he wants them to think he's frightened, right? So they don't follow his example and end up in death row. Is he Catholic? So what? About to die, heaven and hell, it could be true. Okay, so it's a million to one against. So he does what the priest asks him, because it's his only chance left. Impure motive. He does it to save his own skin. God. My all-time favorite movie, and you just ruined it for me. Julie. Are you in bed? Tim's there, isn't he? Has he left? He said he was going to yours yesterday. He never got there. I'll phone you back. He'll be all right. Please. I'll tell you, if Cagney's in hell, he's watching British movies. You dirty rat. Room with a view for the 100th time, you dirty rat. Where's Eddie G? Where's Bogart? Sleep in our bed tonight, kids. Please. Any more uh, bets? Yeah, 604 hearts. Diamonds win. No, the mistake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine hearts win. I'm sorry. If there's any consolation, you very nearly got away with it. It was a mistake. You owe me a grand. He didn't take a coat. He had no money. 
His dad's less than a mile away and he never got there. He hasn't been seen since last night. I didn't think of ringing to see that it arrived. He often goes round to his dance. Can you remember what he was wearing? Trainers, black denims, long sleeve t shirt. <laughs> That's the last thing I said to him, actually. I said, You're not going out in that, put your coat on. Police? Yeah. Any news? It's my husband. I don't live here. We're separated. Hmm. I'm DCI Bilbro. This is DS Penhaligon. A DCI? Oh, Jesus. I think he's dead. What size shoe did he take? Did he take? Does he take? Seven. Seven. Been so understanding. Yeah? Right. They found a seven. I'll tell them. It means nothing, Andy. It means nothing! Could be a perfectly innocent explanation for this, Mrs. Lang. Get Fitz. We don't know he's dead yet. Missing two days, didn't take a coat, didn't take any money, and we found his shoe. Do you think he's alive? speaks volumes about a person panhandle, the way they suck a sherbet lemon. Me, I'm a cruncher. I like to pop them in crunch. Explosion of sherbet, instant gratification. Judith is a roller. She likes to roll them around her mouth for ages, noisily. You see, as a child, she get more pleasure out of making the other kids jealous than she did out of the sweetie itself. 
I think you're probably a sucker, am I right? I think you probably like to make it last. Yeah. I bet you could suck that sherbet lemon wafer thin before you got so much as a hint of sherbet. <laughs> yeah. That's indicating a massive guilt complex. Stay in the car, Jane. I want to know why they separated. I want to know why they didn't report it for 24 hours. It looks like the brother's hiding something too. My wife's in labor. It looks like the kid's dead, but don't tell him that, okay? Did you choose Tim's trainers? He chose them. Does he have any friends? Of course he's got friends. Would you wear these? I'll be seen dead in them. Because your mates will give you a stick. Yeah, what's him on got any mates? Greg Stevens. <laughs> Greg Stevens is a mental retard. Did you arrive with Tim recently? Not recently, no. Why didn't you phone when you didn't arrive? I wasn't expecting him. Look, we feel bad enough. Don't be making it worse, okay? Sorry. Did you ever with Tim recently? Look, he hasn't run away. He's got no coat, he's got no money. And he left his books, poetry. It's a load of crap. If he was running away, he'd took them with him. So he hasn't run away, right? Mm. Would you mind if I had a look round his room? This is my room. Yeah, reminds me of my son. Unmistakable whiff of smelly feet. You know, at Christmas, he doesn't hang his sock up, he just stands it up. Finished? Yeah. Alarm. Jesus! Thank you. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You keep your mother out of your room, yeah? Yeah. But Tim lets her in here. Yeah. When I was his age, I was in the Biggles. Who's his English teacher? You think he's dead? Inconfident. Yeah. We fear the worst. Besides me doing it to the kids. The art of teaching today, just keeping your hands off the little bastard. How's his mother handling it? She fears the worst too. Do you know Tim well? Hardly know him at all. Bit of a loner. Bit effeminate, gets picked on. Do you live alone? At the moment, yeah. I'm thinking about getting married. To somebody in the staff? Yeah. If you're watching this, Tim, please phone. Whatever it is, whatever you've done, whatever you're running away from, we can sort it out. If somebody's holding Tim, If anybody watching this is holding Tim. If anybody watching this is holding Tim. If anybody... 
If anybody watching this has any information whatsoever please. regarding Tim, or any information they think may be relevant, please contact your local police. It's really important you tell me. We're talking. Can you find this place as you knew it? Come on, boy. Let's just squeeze through a hedge. If you believe the information to the earth, could you show us? Nine 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 straight away. I'm married. The man I was with is married. Yeah. She's ringing from home. Police. I'll tell them. Are you sure? Yep. You found him. Shall we go in there? Mr. Lane? I'm afraid it's very bad news. He's dead. I'm so sorry. How? He was found hanging. He didn't kill himself. My son... It's early days yet. ...did not kill himself. My son did not kill himself. It's very early days, yeah. It's not all bloody right. You stop patronising me, right? Right. I thought you were a gobshite in there, sir. Withholding his name is a criminal offence. What's his name? He's got a wife and three kids. What's his name? Did you have sex? Mrs. Perry, we've got forensic at the scene. If they find anything, they'll want to know whether your boyfriend left it or anyone else. Do you understand how important that is? Yes. Did you have sex? No. So what's his name? I'm not going to tell you his name. Here she is, little red bleeding riding on. I'm handling it. I'm going round to your old man right now and I'm going to tell him what you've been up to. Let me have it. And I'm going to find out where this fancy man is and I'm going to tell his missus. He's got three everything. kids. Everything. Every bloody thing. Three kids? Yeah. His yeah. three kids are still alive, aren't yeah. they? We're talking about the death of a child. Tell me, okay? A bloody child and you've got the cheek she to fart around, fast. wasting our time. Right, so what a banged up. Yeah. Right. Well, bang her up yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. Bang her up and yeah. throw away the yeah. key. Yeah. Yeah. Wasting our time with all your evidence, okay. right? Okay. Francis Bates, 81 Greenside Park. Did you get all the path? 
It'll be about an hour. Is it a fancy dress, Bates? Francis Bates. I heard. Go around and pick him up, the pair of you. Then get Fitz. I want him with us. Oh, boss! No offence, right? Right. It's getting so we can't shit without Fitz. From the bank. God. This grammar is atrocious. Your economics is worse. I know people who own more than this. Robert Maxwell, maybe. Well, I think we've got bigger problems than that, haven't we? Such as? Do you know you use up more calories eating salary than the staff actually provides? Such as our marriage. Well, I want to solve those problems, Fitz. You don't. You like crisis. Gives you an excuse to drink and gamble. You take away the crisis, you take away the excuse. Bullshit. A bullshit as in, I can't think of an answer right now, so I'll just pretend it's all beneath me. Get us back. Come on in. She's out then. Uh, admit to the shop. Ten minutes. Hello. There Ten you minutes. Right. Back to the grind, eh? Uh, with a vengeance. So I'm going to have to lay it on the line. You don't have the right to lay anything on the line. And that puts you in a very powerful position, doesn't it? I was wrong, so I've got to suffer in silence. Well, no. I don't want half a relationship. I want us to sleep together. I want sex. I like sex, for God's yeah, sake. Yeah, we know that. Naughty fits. You're supposed to be mature. House trained. Should be able to talk this through like a rational human being. Well, I'm not a rational human being. I'm blazing. I like to cut that bastard's balls off. Glass of wine, dear. I'll give you ten minutes. Look. I'm a psychologist. I can help. This way. That was Moscow. <laughs> You've dragged me down here for this. We think it's murder. You think it's murder? What's this? And this? Breaks in lividity. Caused by? Pressure. He was left face down after he died. Bruises to the front and sides of the throat, none whatsoever at the back. He's been strangled, left face down, then strung up. He's been dead about 72 hours. Thank you. And you're a DCI? I knew it was murder. I wanted it confirming. You've confirmed it. Thank you. You can get along to your party now. What are you going as? <laughs> Man jogging, that's all. Your girlfriend didn't mention a jogger. She was in the car. I was having a pee. Can you describe him? Thirty odd, average height. It was dark. Nothing else. Tracksuit top with a hood. Chased her. She likes that kind of thing. What kind of thing? Rough. We were just about to... We were just about to start when we saw it. Thirteen-year-old boy. I didn't know who it was, how old he was. We just ran. You left the thirteen-year-old boy swinging from a tree. She's married. I'm married, I've got kids. You could have phoned anonymously. We did. She did. Twelve hours later. You left his parents clutching its straws for twelve hours. If it had been left up to you, you wouldn't have phoned at all. Your missus finding out about your bit on the side. That means more to you than the death of a child. For Christ's sake, what kind of a man are you? Hey, hey, hey. He could have been alive. Didn't that enter your head? He could have been alive. You could have saved him. 
Let's go with one, alright? It's human nature. If a child's in trouble, you don't go away from him, you go to him. Human bloody nature. If you don't do that, you're not a human. You're some kind of bloody animal. Boss. We were there. We were there, waiting with them. You tosspot, you prick, you bloody animal. Twelve bloody hours and then they told you, prick. You... We don't do a thing on the full post-mortem. Then we say it's murder. Stick the family on telly. I'd like to speak to them first, please. I'm talking. Appeal to this jogger to come forward. Meanwhile, we talk to every kid in the school. What do you think? I think you should go home. I'd like to look round the house first thing in the morning, please. <sighs> the family have been through enough. You're putting them on the telly. Is that supposed to be some sort of relaxation therapy? They like going on the telly. It's a comfort for them, isn't it? Seeing themselves on telly. Can I speak to you a minute? Shut it. Don't you ever do that to me again. Don't you ever do suggest that my private life's interfering with my work. I've seen you in tears. I've seen you sobbing your bloody heart out. And I didn't say it to you, so how dare you say it to me? I am sorry. I'll bring her in a minute, see how she's doing. Right. We're not sleeping, that's why. Uh, she's a week overdue. Her blood pressure's up and down every minute. They wanted to take her in and induce it, but she wanted it natural. Natural means up every half hour for a piss, every hour for cramp, every two hours waiting for contractions. I said to the nurse, I said, take me in. She's only having a baby, I'm having kittens. suicide. He was always a victim. Murder. He's a victim to the end. Suicide. Well, that's some sort of choice he's made. Some sort of courage he's shown. I didn't hope. I didn't pray. I knew. I knew it wouldn't be suicide. 
like a suicide's a bomb under the kitchen table. Every member of the family cut to pieces. He wouldn't do that to you. He loved me. You got a son? Yeah, 18. 18 years old, not 18 sons. You'll know then. Your son's born. One day you'll watch him play football from school. Take him to Old Trafford. Buy him his first pint. Not Andy. Anything I wanted, he did the opposite. But that were okay, because Tim were born. I'd do it all with Tim. Tim turned out to be a girl. Guilt. They told me it was murder. I felt relieved. The blame lay somewhere else. And I didn't think about Tim, what he went through. I do now, but then when they told me, that the moment they told me, I didn't think about his pain and his fear. I just felt relief. Guilt. I wanted a crisis. We rode over Tim, we separated over Tim. Just give me a nice little crisis, I thought, and I'll go back and sort everything out and everything will be okay. Together again. Well, I've got my crisis. There's always guilt. I've spoken to dozens of parents who've lost their children. They've all been blameless. They've all felt guilt. If only we'd said this, if only we'd done that. If only you'd made Tim wear his coat. And delayed him by two minutes, by two seconds. He would never have been at that place at that time. He'd never have met his killer. May I read you something? It's a father talking. She was young, vulnerable. Pictures used to flash before my eyes. My daughter lying dead in a ditch. I told myself all fathers thought that way. All fathers saw these pictures. But then it happened. It's as if I willed it to happen. I saw those pictures in my mind and I willed it to happen. You know just what he means, don't you? Well, the guilt soon goes. Grief remains, but grief is your friend. It lets you mourn, remember, cry. What's your name, son? Tom Rolfe. Tom Rolfe. And your address? 145 Huntley Road, Hume. Get him out! Come in! Hey! Get him out, son! Get him out! 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 You've picked on Tim for years. Now you can show his big brother how it's done. All right? Stay me, okay? All right? Stay with me. Shut up, Tim. No more, you know. Get out of me. 
You're a big bully, aren't you? Yeah. And a coward. Yeah. I give this heavy weight from off my head and this unwieldy scepter from my hand. The pride of kingly sway from out my heart. With mine own tears, I wash away my balm. With mine own hands, I give away my crown. With mine own tongue, Why did you go for those boys? I've already told him why. Tell me. They used to pick on Tim. Tim asked for your help, didn't he, Andy? But you didn't give him any. Now he's dead, you feel guilty. Look, it was happening in school. His teachers there, you know what I mean? They should have done something about it. And they didn't? No. You're lying. Look, Cassidy had a word. Gobshites like that don't understand a word. Why didn't you do something? I've already told you, it was happening in school. Teachers there, they should sort it out. Lie. Look, it, it's their fault. They should sort Lie. it out. It was, Lie. It's not my responsibility. Lie. Piss off. Excuse me. I've just left your mother. If you'd helped him, you might have saved her some of that pain. Don't you dare tell me you don't feel guilty about that. Her broken heart, all that grief. <laughs> Look, I've got mates, all right? They took the piss out of him all the time. He was a little faggot. You saying I should have stood up for Tim against my own mates? Yes. Well, that's bollocks, all right? Yeah? Tell me everything you know about Mr. Cassidy. This morning with Mr. and Mrs. Lang. Yeah. I thought you were brilliant. You should hear my pillow talk. Are you okay? 
No, I'm afraid of heights. That's a lie. Nobody's afraid of heights. They're really afraid of themselves, what they might do. Listen, if I do survive this, will you let me take you out and get you pissed and make a pathetic attempt to seduce you? Stay away from me. I will. If you come near me, I'll jump. I'd much sooner jump in my own time, so please stay away from me. Okay. Forty or fifty feet's enough, you know. Why so high? Too much time to think. You might change your mind halfway down. Lemmings. We laugh at lemmings, you know, for throwing themselves off cliffs, but I have a suspicion that the lemmings will have the last laugh. Because one day... What's your first name, by the way? It's Nigel. Nigel, God, I'd be suicidal. One day, Nigel, a lemming will fly. Tim Lang didn't kill himself, by the way, he was murdered. Pigeons did it, you know, millions of years ago. Threw themselves off cliffs. Millions of pigeons over thousands and thousands of years. Thudding, dead to the ground. And then one day, a pigeon flapped and it didn't hit the ground quite so hard. And then the day after that, one of them flew. Because it followed its instincts, Nigel. Man suppressed that instinct, which is why man will never fly, Nigel. Come on, let's do it. Come on, let's follow our instincts. Let's fly, I'm gonna do it. Come on, you do it, come with me. Top of the world, Ma! Christ's sake, Christ! He asked about his mother. How's his mother handling it? Yes. His mother, not his parents. Well, his parents have split up. How did you know that? I taught him. Yeah, well, you taught hundreds of kids. Did you know all their family backgrounds that well? No. So you knew Tim particularly well? Yeah. Yeah. So why did you like him? Huh? I found a book of Wilfred Owen. In Tim's room. Did you give that to him? Um, I might have done. Oh, come on. <laughs> you give a book of poetry to a 13-year-old boy? That's intimate. You would remember that. Look. I did a stupid thing. I'm sorry. I'm a bit depressed and a bit drunk. If you're going to charge me with something, then charge me. But I'm not going to answer any more questions about Tim. What should we charge you with? I don't know. Anything. Trespass, wasting police time, I don't know. Murder? You like to keep fit? Yeah. Burn off all that anger, stop to take it out on the kids? I was joking. Did you jog? Yes. Were you jogging three nights ago? Um... Were you jogging three nights ago? No. Where were you? At home. Alone? Oh, my girlfriend, she was with me. You believe him? Yeah. She thinks you killed Tim. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I asked you if you lived alone. Do you remember that? Yes. But I'm thinking of getting married. It's true. I am thinking of getting married. Yeah, but why articulate it? Huh? A simple yes or no would have been enough, unless you think something's implied by living alone. Such as? You said I was at home with my girlfriend, not I was at home with Joe or Leslie or Sammy. You said I was at home with my girlfriend. What is your girlfriend's name, by the way? Leslie. Leslie, how did I guess? I've no idea. You wouldn't say I was at home with Leslie because... 
Leslie could be a man, and that's the very last thing you'd want anyone to think, right? You think I'm gay? No. No, you think you're gay. Ah. Super sleuth. Do you know this man can fill in a sun crossword in under three days? I'd like you to accompany me to the station, we'll please. We'll bring him in. The boss said. No, we'll bring him in. You're going to wish you jumped. He's gay. Gay? Miserable sod like that. Yeah. I told him he was a shirt lifter. What's you... going on? I was just about to come in and tell you, sir, there's a hostile crowd outside the station. Get on to uh, Brighton Road, Nick. Bit of backup. Discreet. My middle name. I speak to three of them. In there, in my own time. Pick the biggest mouse. Right. Why wasn't I told about this earlier? Will you listen to me, I sir? I am listening to you. Stay within the law unless you want to end up in there with him. Did Cassidy do it? We're conducting our inquiries with vigour. We're optimistic. Did Cassidy do it? Is that clear? It is clear. I want to know. Will you listen to me? Will you hear what I'm saying? We're conducting our inquiries You're gonna with vigour and we're optimistic. We're talking to him. You're going to charge him? I'm not going to say any more to you. Why not? I'm going to take you upstairs we and I'm going to bang you up. Your girlfriend's coming down. She likes trap too, does she? Don't turn your back. He says he was with you. Yeah, he was. You've remembered. Yes. He says you went to the theatre. You're lying. He hates the theatre. He says he cooked you a meal. Yes, he did. What was it? I can't remember. What was it? Chicken. Just chicken? And vegetables. Broccoli, potatoes, peas. Wine? Yeah. What kind? Dry white. What then? Um, we listened to music. Classical? No, it was jazz. Sex? No, thanks. Did you have sex? Yes. What was it like? None of your business. What would you say if I told you it was queer? I'd say that you were the one with the moustache. Do we have to check all this out, Leslie? No, you don't. It's the truth. You're lying. That's okay. 
But if we have to prove that you're lying, we will come down on you like a ton of bricks. You've been his alibi for years, haven't you, Leslie? So? He's gay, but he won't come out. That's understandable. He's a teacher. Clause 28 and all that. He needs a woman, a member of staff, to prove to the whole school that he's straight. He talks marriage. He lets it known that he's talking marriage, but it is just talk. He never names the day. How long have you known him? Three years. Three years? And all that time, not one suspicion? He tried to kill himself. I know what you're thinking. You'll have to leave the school. Poor old Leslie, they'll say, hanging on to Cassidy like grim death and all the time, blah, blah. Some of them will laugh at you. That's okay. But some of them will pity you. And if you lie to us now, they will despise you. Were you with him three nights ago, Leslie? No. Nigel. What have they told you? Oh. Well, it's a pack of lies. I'm sorry. Well, for Christ's sake, it's a pack of lies. They told her you're gay. I'm not. Mm. She believed them. I think if you told my wife I was gay, she wouldn't believe you. There had to be suspicion first. Shall I prove it to you? Somewhere private. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing three nights ago? Uh, I stayed in. With Leslie? Yeah. It's not what she told us. I marked books. I jogged. I marked some more books. Fancy man. Bates. What was he wearing? He jogged. The woods on the road. What was he wearing? Bob! You look half a mile from the woods. But he preferred to jog on the road. Go in there and ask her to ask him what he was wearing the night he was running. A long time ago. You get a lot of kids in the woods. You're a teacher, you're fair game. They shout things out, it can wind you up a bit. And you're jogging to try and relax. That's why I don't use the woods, okay? Okay. Now, why did you try to kill yourself? Oh. Oh. I'd had a few drinks, I was just depressed. Yeah, what about? The exchange rate mechanism. What were you wearing that night when you were jogging? Tracksuit, trainers. Would you mind if we went to get them? I would. Yeah, I would. Okay. Did you have that on? Yeah. Could I borrow it for an hour or two? Would you like a cup of tea? Can I come in? The wife's in. It's about your statement. You were in the woods with your girlfriend and you saw a man jogging. Yeah. Who is it? Christian Aid. Was he going fast or slow? Quite fast. Oh, well, there you are, you see. Look, we're on this key. No. Jogging. People think slow, but he was going fast. Yeah. Running would be more accurate. Running from the scene, yeah. I just wanted accurate. Anyway, we want you down the station for an ID parade. You can change your statement then. What do I tell the wife? You think of something. I taught the boy! When you teach kids, you get close to them. I. I've had nits of bloody kids before now, never mind bits of fibre. 
The thing is, he wore a shirt and tie at school. He put that T-shirt on at about 5 p.m. Now, that means that between 5 p.m. and the time of his death, you touched him. Another thing about T-shirts. I have a teenage son, so I know about these things. You do not put on your best T-shirt to go and see your dad. You save it for copping off. You wear it to impress somebody you fancy. He fancied you, didn't he? You were his teacher and very properly you resisted. But that night, he came to you, didn't he? In that t-shirt. A blonde, beautiful teenage boy. Those arms, those eyes, that smile. I don't blame you for weakening. Nobody does. <laughs> I marked books. I jogged. And then I marked some more books. That's all. This man. Oh, yes. Yes. This man's here because he taught the boy, isn't he? I know him. He teaches my son and all. It is not this man. It is definitely not this man. And how do you know? Sorry? How do you know he's not the jogger Bates saw? Bates told us he wasn't. He was lying. Chief witness goes up to chief suspect, definitely not him, bollocks. He just wants to keep himself out of court, doesn't want some smart-ass barrister asking him what he was doing in the woods. Hello. It's David Bilber here, yeah. Could you, um, I've been ringing my wife, could you just look through the window and see if the car's there? Thanks. And keep away from Fitz, you're starting to sound like him. What do you mean by that? You know very well what I mean. I don't. I don't know what you mean, and I'd like you to explain, okay, so... Hey, 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 hey. I'd like you... Nothing to do with you, okay? Nothing whatsoever to do with you. I need to come home to you in a flat week. Thanks, yeah. She's in the garden. Would you please explain, sir? <sighs> do you think he's guilty? Yeah. Do you? Your gut instinct, is he guilty? Yeah. I know he's guilty. Our job is to get as much evidence as we can against that man and hand it over. That's our job. No bloody philosophy, thanks very much. Whatever's going on between you and Fitz is affecting the way you do your work. We expect a result, we get sweet FA and you talk about progress. That's Fitz speak. I get enough of him. I don't want it from somebody who's a member of my team. And don't give me any crap about keeping my private life separate, because you obviously can. Hello. Me again. What you doing in the garden? I'm bothering you, I know. Could you just pop across and tell her to go in and relax? Tell her I said she's got to go in and relax. Thanks. Pulling bleeding weeds. I can't keep my private life separate. I haven't been fussing over my wife for the last half hour. I think that's a bit below the belt. She's been pregnant before. They lost it. I've spoken to some of the ringleaders and I've got backup standing by. It's under control. Can you charge, Cassidy? Not yet, no. You know what'll happen if you let him go? I can handle it. How's the wife? No 
won't change. Should be with her, David. <laughs> we can hold a fort for a few days. Don't do this to me. He's guilty. It's only a matter of time before he coughs. Please don't do this to me. Please. Okay. You let him go! We can't hold a man without evidence and we have... You must have had evidence, evidence to pull the bastard in! we're concerned, the man is innocent. Now, I'm sure we're going to have more questions to ask, Mr. You Cameron. said you had enough! But you said you were optimistic! You two are! You're not leaving this station. Optimistic means Cassidy. you know something. You let him get away. You're holding us and letting that bastard go. I have reason to believe a crime will be committed if I let you go. Therefore, you're staying in the station. All right. <laughs> The, uh, meter ran out. I had no pound coins. Is this your handwriting, Mr. Cassidy? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is Timothy Lang's book. I oh, know. So? Do you remember those Hamlet cigar ads? I had a great one. The guy tried to gas himself, right? Singularly unsuccessful because it's natural gas, right? So he decides to console himself by lighting a Hamlet cigar. He lights it up, boom, the whole house goes up. And then as the dust settles, the camera goes in, finds the packet, and it says, smoking can seriously damage your health. Criminal damage and endangering life. Cassidy! If you do not have to say anything, but anything you do say will be taken down. Tell him he's dead! In evidence Cassidy! against you. Do you understand? You're dead, mate! Put them in the van. Just what are you going to do about that? What are you going to do about Mr. that? What are you going to do about that? You spend the night in a hotel with DS Beck and Fitz for your own safety, okay? Yeah, okay. Well, we're over here. Why, Beck? Sir? Because Beck will keep his mind on the job, you won't. Hey, Jimmy! As soon as this is sorted, I'm off. Yeah? Where? Anywhere. Just so long as there's not the faintest chance of bumping into a copper. Ah, Moss side. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two weeks due. I'm taking it. With Peter? Probably. I miss you. Can I play the dirty old man for just one minute? You've made a career out of it, wasn't on the minute? Yeah. Young women are wasted on young men. You'll be off on holiday with Peter, right? Yeah. And you'll want him to rub oil on your back and he'll be reading or something. And he'll do it, but he won't want to. Now me, I would rub oil on your back until boots run dry. You fancy a quick one? <laughs> Why not? Minutes up. That's what you like, then. Isn't it, Fitz? Me on the side, your wife and your kids to go home to. 
Yes. <laughs> I think most men would. In fact, if any man who says otherwise is a liar. Answer this, not a joke. Not a put down, a straight answer, yeah? Yeah. Will you come away with me? What, instead of Peter? Yeah. I know what you're thinking. Don't tell me what. No, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I've paid the penance, I might as well commit this sin. No analysis, please. Just a straight answer. Got fits at the hotel and back to the station. Right. Is he paralyzed? The answer is yes. Yes to what? I've asked him to come away and Roger me rigid for a fortnight, sir. You're telling me to mind my own business? Yes, I am, sir. The station. This is posh. It's a bloke in there with a silver cane. Taps your dick twice when you're finished. Suit you, that job. Drink? No, I'll get my own. Sauce for Susie or Night of Lust? Night of Lust. Susie's a lesbian. Shall I tell you why I can't stand lesbians? Please. Quiz are okay. As long as I don't turn me back on you, you're okay. Two quiz doing it. That's two women going spare. With two lesbians doing it, that's two men going short. You can tell he reads The Guardian, can't you? Understand is not to excuse, oh, right? Oh, 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 last time, oh, let me through. Look, it's my brother murdered, and you're nicking me dad. And you will all be under arrest. Not listening, are you, Wanko? Get the back of the police. Get the back of the police. please. Oh, The police officer, son, John, right? Get in there! Behave! Oh, you bastard, eh? You broke up my son's arm, you bastard! We've got a lawyer down here and a doctor, It's under control. Right? I've uh, sent back up here and it got a bit out of hand, but it's under control. Sorted. You've brought those men to this nick. My officers made the arrest. Taking them elsewhere will be bowing to that lot out there. You're needed. Come on, lads. Come on. Didn't even consider it, did you? I did, sir. The effect it would have. I did, sir. They were obstructing. You're not charging him? Yeah. Go up to the canteen. I've sent back up in, sir. You go up to the canteen, have a cup of tea, stay there. Go and have a cup of tea.
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What are you sorry about? You're sorry because... I'm sorry he's dead. You're sorry because you killed him. I'm sorry he's dead. You're lying. You're sorry because you killed him. I didn't kill him. Explain the fibers on your watch. I've no need to explain anything. They prove that you touched him sometime between five o'clock and the time of his death. You touched him. Did more than touch him. Oh, for a commoner garden rapist, them I can understand. Sick bastards like you shoving bits of metal into young kids. Homophobia. What kind of a hobby is that, huh? It's got more than two. What kind of a so possible can pleasure can you get out of that? Homophobia, a morbid fear. Look, of I know what fitzophobia is. A morbid fear of men who talk through their ass. Just stay out of this. You're about fourteen when you came over here, right? This is the suspect. New boy in school. Difficult age to make friends. The girls would talk to you. A new face, girls like that. But the boys. We've got clout. When we bang you up, you're going to be begging for Section 43. A bit of protection. I don't want the protection. The boys ignored you, didn't they, Bet? You think the screws are going to give you protection? Are they shite? I don't want it. One boy in particular. You wanted to be near him. You wanted to hold him and touch him. It bothered you. Those screws have got kids of their own. They're going to leave your cell door open. They're going to turn their back. Then the lads will be in and they won't be there to shake your hand. You know what I'm saying? You thought you were gay. Well, you shut it! You loved that boy. You are talking crap. It kept you awake at night. Am I queer? Am I queer? The girls talk to me. They must see it in me. The boys ignore me. I'll prove I'm not queer. How do you prove you're not queer? You pick a fight. Who do you fight? Whose face do you smash to a pulp? The boy you loved. Bollocks. He's done this before. He looks in there and in there Something sick, something twisted. And because he's felt it, because he's thought it, he thinks we all have. But we haven't. Some of us are normal. <laughs> you given her one? Who? Pan Halligan. Where was I before I was so rudely interrupted? Section 43. If we say yeah, you get it. If we say no, you don't. And if you don't, you end up in court with your dick in a jar. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah? And Halligan, boss. What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? Your wife's gone into labour. The crowd dispersing. Just about. Drive me to the hospital, then get on to Jimmy Beck. Cassidy's got a cough. Right. Something I ate. It's your arrogance, Fitz. A nice young bit of stuff like that, and you are hanging around her. I wouldn't even dream of it. Yeah, well, I've got my hair in the right place. Read it, please. I can't. Look, I've had this for years. I'm not going to shave it off just because a bunch of queers start growing them. It's beneath me. I'm not that insecure. Do you understand what I'm saying? Keep your hair on. Read it, please. No. Because that's what made you kill him. First ice. Tears on the classroom floor. I start to grieve. He opens the classroom door. 
tells me to leave. First ice isn't nice. Why first ice? It's a poem about a girl in a telephone box. I. She's been hurt, and I read it to the kids and get them to write about a time they were hurt. <laughs> he opens the classroom door and tells me to leave. It's you. It is, isn't it? Fourteen years old. Beautiful. More a girl than a boy. You want to hold him, touch him, explore. He's crying. It's all right, Timothy. It's okay. It's okay. He's screaming. You've gone too far. He'll tell his mother. His mother will tell the police. The police will come round to the school. One hand's enough. Such a delicate throat. The eyes won't close. You squeeze and you squeeze. The eyes won't close. You turn them over face down in the mud. You hold them. You run. Where? Home. You pace the floor. I've strangled him. I've strangled him. A rope. You go back. He's still there. Cold. You pick him up. There's air in the lungs. It gets squeezed out. Sounds like a groan. For one terrible second, you think he's still alive. I marked the books. I jogged. Well, people must have seen me jogging. And then I came home and Mark some more books. Oh, oh it's got a lovely muff of hair. That's it. Right, come on now, pant now. Pant now, love. Pant. Try and relax. 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 Relax now. Pant now. Pant. Come on. Come on. Sod off! Confess. Plead guilty. It'll be over in a flash. Deny it. There'll be a trial. Week upon week. Detail upon detail. Your mother squirming and cringing. You've done this. My flat, my job, my mother, Leslie. All because you decided I was gay. What gives you the right? What makes you so bloody arrogant you can decide that after five lousy minutes? Because I'm right. You're wrong. Are you married? Yeah. When was the last time you gave your wife a good scene to? When was the last time? It's my business. Well, you've poked your nose into mine for long enough. I haven't killed somebody. You have. I haven't. Bring her down here. She's probably gasping for it. I'll slip her one. You can ask her what she thinks. All those times you made love to Leslie, she faked it every single time. Why else would she believe you were gay? Huh? She felt the need to fake it. She knew you needed reassurance. She knew that deep down, something was wrong. I marked books. I jogged. And then you marked more books. Did you ever tell Tim off? Of course I told Tim off. More than the other children? No. He was special. You'd have to hide that. You'd tell him off more than the others. No. 
You were standing, he was sitting down, head bowed. Look at me when I'm talking to you, boy. Look at me. Look at me. And he'd look up. Those blue eyes. Those long blonde lashes. More a girl than a boy. These eyes were saying, please stop this. Please stop this. Please stop this. How did that make you feel, Nigel? Grey. What? They were more grey than blue. See me, Tim. See me, Tim. And what? And go to your desk. I go to his. Well, not just his, every pupil's. Ah. So you squat. And be really close, touching, going through his work. You exchange glances. Be inches away. Inches away from those eyes. Huh? That was it. The moment you've been waiting for. The moment that would get you through the rest of the day. He really was that special to you, wasn't he, Nigel? She disgusted me. And what were they saying? Those eyes, the last time you saw them. Please stop this, please stop this, please stop this. <sighs> You want to atone? Yes. That's why you tried to kill yourself. A life for a life. Yes. I don't want that much, Nigel. Just confess. I know you want to confess. You've killed a child, Nigel. That's a terrible, terrible burden. You want to share it. I'm here, Nigel. I'm willing to share your burden. You're willing to share my burden? Yes. I won't let you forget you said that. I won't forget it. I killed Timothy Lane. Come on, darling. You're the most beautiful woman that's ever lived. Come on, darling. Ah! Go on, darling. Good girl. Go on, darling. Come on, love. I think you're going away for a while. On your own? Yeah. You look terrible. Well, I haven't slept. Then sleep. How often have you wished me dead? <laughs> I've lost count. So you can sleep with other men. With a clear conscience. I'll put it as dozens of cups. I don't give a damn how many people you put it to. You're wrong. But I've had opportunities, Fitz. More than most. Men see me. They see you sitting next to me, overweight, pissed, arguing with someone at the next table. Totally ignoring me until you've smashed them into an intellectual pulp. They assume I'm available. Yeah, I know. I enjoy it. Yes, I've seen you. Mm. All that effort to impress and it's wasted because they haven't got a tenth of that or a twentieth of that. I've loved you for 25 years and I have never wanted anyone else.
Just wait a minute, a minute, and I ask you all to wait outside. Listen, the press conference will start in half an hour now. Please, outside. He's coming, he's coming. Say nothing, say nothing. Yeah? I was getting sick of the jokes, right? So I got rid of it. I was gonna keep it. Just to prove I've got nothing to prove. But I haven't got to prove I've got nothing to prove. So I got rid of it. Right? Could you give us that again, Jimmy? <laughs> Tell Peter you want a tan, he's got to let you out of the bedroom now and again. And don't speak with your mouth full. <laughs> Coffee? What do you want? I've come to help you. I've lost my job. My flat's been destroyed. Leslie's walked out and my mother's been persecuted. Apart from decapitation, what else can you do for me? You are living a lie. You're a happily married man, are you? Hmm? You never thought of adultery or just walking away from it all. You don't. You go on living your lie. You're a hypocrite. There are worse things, Nigel. To hell with the consequences. To hell with who gets hurt. Just so long as you can expose lies. Not your own, of course. Other people. That's got nothing to do with truth. Just out of selfishness, you bloody hypocrite. You're the murderer. Get out of the bloody pulpit. You said you were willing to share my burden. Do yep. you remember that? Yes. I didn't kill Tim. Don't believe you. I'm not gay. I fancied him because he was a girl. Nigel, I don't mind you telling me lies, but come on. He knew. He talked to me at school. In the staff room, they'd laugh. Takes one to know one, they'd say. <laughs> I'd laugh too. But then he came round to my flat. He needed to talk. frightened me. In the staff room, they'd laugh. He brought things out in me. I chased him away. He died that night. Are you saying you didn't kill him? I as good as killed him. All you saw was guilt. The same guilt that Andy must have felt, that his parents must have felt, or anyone who ever knew him. That's all. No more. Tell me you didn't do it. I did not kill Timothy Lang. What's wrong, Fitz? An innocent man's confessed, the killer's still out there? No. You were wrong. That's what's bothering you, isn't it? You arrogant bastard. Nigel. 
Look, you want to punish yourself. That's fine. I'll fix something up for you, you selfish, twisted little prick. But there's a killer out there. He's going to strike again. Retract your confession. I want him to kill again. Retract your confession right now. I want him to kill again. You said you'd share my burden. That's my burden. I'm responsible for the death of a child. If he kills again, you'll know what it's like. You'll be able to share it. You did promise. Am I right? You did promise. Oh my God. didn't do it. How do you know? I've just spoken to him. He told me. And you believe him? Yeah. Is he going to retract his statement? No. And what's the problem? He didn't do it. He's got a result. The rest is up to CPS. Okay. Boss, they're ready for you. Oi, Sarge. Sarge. <laughs> Will you behave yourselves, the pair? Will we just grow up? Look, I don't give a shit about the result. He didn't do it. It's the truth that counts. I've got a press conference. Look, I get the statement off that man. That means I'm responsible. DS Beck got the statement. What? DS Beck got the statement after shrewd and persistent questioning by DS Beck, the witness made his statement. That man couldn't get Edward to confess that. That cough. I got the statement, Look, which Vince, means that. Why don't you just piss off? Jimmy. Right? Why don't you just piss Jimmy. off? And give us a rest. I've had to put up with you all bloody night, and the novelty is wearing a bit thin. Do you know what I mean? Why don't you just button your baldy lip? Tell him I'm coming. <clears throat> if you don't stop this now, we're finished. You understand? I'm out of here. Have you finished? It's the truth that matters, not the result. The truth. Here endeth the lesson, yeah? Yeah. If I let him go, what have I got left? Nothing. What do you want me to do? He didn't do it. You told me he did. I pursued one line of inquiry, one sole line of inquiry, and you want me to tell the boss I was wrong, I'd be back pounding the bloody beat. You want me to tell that lot out there I was wrong, they'd lynch me. You want me to tell his mother I was wrong? I'm charging him. He's innocent. Can you live with that? Because I can't. Right. Everyone ready? Yeah? A man was arrested this morning in connection with the murder of Timothy Lang. That man has since been charged and will appear in court in the morning. That's all. Thank you. What evidence do you have for arresting this man? Oh, he's he's got got his Boss, shut it, please. Have you got a confession? for Fitz, Judith, Mark or Kate, please speak after the tone. Message for Fitz from DS Penhalligan. I think you've forgotten our appointment, Fitz. Then go back to college. I'm not going back to college. I had enough of school. You know what I mean? Because it was crap. You're getting to sound more like your father every day, Mark. Look, 
it's a well-known fact. If you come from a posh house and your parents have got plenty of dosh, you do well at school. The posher the house, the more dosh your old man's got, the better you should do. Right? Well-known fact, yeah? Well, that proves it then. Prince Charles is thick as pig shit. Poshest out in the country, loads of dosh. What did he get? CSE in metalwork. <laughs> and as for his brothers... Thick as pig shit. He can go to the college or go to the school, but if he hasn't got religion, he's an educated fool. That's all. Well, 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 that's all. You've got to have more love, more understanding every day of your life. And that's all. People find one another and they say they're doing swell. All they want is your money and you can go to war. That's all. Well, 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 that's all. 